So this morning you heard, as we talked about, the challenges that we have in our healthcare system and as it is evolving, what that will look like. As we move forward, we want to focus on innovation. Because if we are not innovating, if we are not finding ways to create new solutions, we will never address the cost curves that you heard about this morning. Those numbers are untenable. I can tell you as an economist, we can't pay for those numbers when we start approaching four, five, six, seven trillion dollars. We can't. The only way we will start to bend that curve as the baby boomer population reaches its peak spending years is through innovation, through earlier diagnostics, and through a lot of other areas. And so my opportunity to share with you as you're enjoying your salads is some of those Arizona health innovations. So, you know, as we talk about planning for the future, I'm also, as you all know, you get homework from me quite often. I have a project that I would like you to do today. Actually, I'd like you to do it sometime during lunch or early this afternoon, and it has to do with these that you see on your table. So all you have to do, and I'm gonna tell you why in just a minute, is on your smartphone or iPad or tablet or whatever you're using to put in bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y slash capital A-Z dash one capital B. Because we need to start planning for Arizona's future today. And there are a lot of people in this state that are currently working on the governor's plan to put $1 billion in research infrastructure on top of what we already have into our community. And it will not get done without your help. So today, we're going to show you how to do that. So it's really, really important that we all support the governor's plan so he can support us in helping to bend that healthcare cost curve and bring new innovations that do make life better for patients. So when we talk about transforming, and we talked a lot this morning about the transformation of the healthcare system or what we hope you know, will somehow come out of that, and as you noticed, our panel didn't agree. Well, surprise, nobody agrees, okay? And so we encourage them not to agree with each other. You know, if you have an opinion, stand by it. Because what you just saw was a tiny slice of what's happening in DC and in every state house around the country. But where we are seeing real gains is we are transforming health. And what I've provided you here are just a couple of examples of some of the things that have come out of or have been partially developed in Arizona. The one at the top is the um, most commonly used today pacemakers and the new micro pacemaker. And you see, you know, one is this big and the other is the size of a calcium capsule. It's not just miniaturization, it's higher reliability, it's less complications, it's a better quality of life for the patient, but it is also a way to lower healthcare costs on things like readmits. We also have um, in there the HTG Seek system, which is a diagnostic system developed and manufactured in Tucson, which is going to help us with the next generation of diagnostics in cancer care. And then, of course, that funny little yellow thing that you see, that's a Braxing. And that is a cancer drug that was tested in Arizona, is manufactured in Arizona, and Celgene um, you know, is now getting multiple indications for that particular cancer drug, which is giving cancer patients more time. And time is the one thing that we can never get enough of. 
We also talked this morning about healthcare, and the reality is, is bending that cost curve. Oops, did I do that? So bending that cost curve is going to be dependent on diagnostics. Dr. Barker will talk about that a little bit more. Um, but diagnosing early, preventing before it happens, that's things that are happening in Arizona with companies like Cancer Prevention Pharmaceuticals who is developing a new drug to help patients who have had polyps not get any more of them. If they don't get the polyps, ideally they won't get the cancer. We have the Arizona Alzheimer's Prevention Initiative, which is a model for the entire world. If you have not gone on endalz.org and taken some of those Minecraft tests and signed up for that clinical trials database, shame on you. They need healthy minds as well as others. Although looking around this room, I'm not sure how many would qualify as healthy minds. Mine included. We also have great innovators like Beacon Bio Biomedical, which is a startup that's at CEI right now. This is technology that was originally licensed out of the National Institutes of Health, which is the wonderful archive as well as research infrastructure and research support driver for many companies in this room. Beacon's goal is to, and I'm not going to explain the difference on the benefit of their product over the other product because people are eating. Um, but basically, if you're not doing the test when you're my age to make sure that you're not going to have colon cancer, if God forbid you get colon cancer, you're not going to live very long. And so the goal is to stop that cancer before it becomes deadly. And the way we do that is through early detection. And Beacon Biomedical is leading the way in that. And yes, Don Weber, you can pay me later. He's right there. Give him a big hand. And, and oh, by the way, I do not have any mo money invested in that company other than the fact that they are AZ bio members. Um, and then lastly, we have Project Honeybee because with all of the information that we are collecting and all of the sensors and all the new technology, somebody's got to figure out which data is meaningful and which data is not. And that's the work that's being done um, at Project Honeybee. How many people at one point or another has worn a disease ribbon? Oh, come on, fess up, you've all done it. The reality is, is that there are not enough colors in the rainbow for all of these diseases. And as we learn more about these diseases, there's going to be every variation of color in the spectrum. Now, you notice that there's an orange ribbon, and we will have Jim Brewer from LLS here a little bit later, and we'll be talking about research and drug cancers. But that particular orange ribbon is for my sister-in-law, Robin. In July, Robin was headed down to the beach with her family. They live on the East Coast. She was going down the shore to their, their beach house, and she had just been really dragging. And so she went to the doctor before she went to the beach. And the doctor's office called while she was at the beach and said, you need to come home right now. Robin had a very, very active and dangerous case of AML, which is one of the hardest leukemias for us to deal with. And they tried everything. And the drugs didn't work, the radiation didn't work, they were going to have to do a bone marrow transplant, and then there was no bone marrow match. Her particular combination didn't have a match. And we went everywhere. We reached out to friends in very high places to try and get that help, and it wasn't there. The doctors at the Abramson Cancer Center at, at Penn came up with a solution, and they said, we're going to try a cord blood stem cell transplant for Robin. And five weeks ago, she had it, and they're still working through it, 
but we talk to her every day and she is getting stronger every day. And we pray that her numbers are going to come up. Okay, that's good, you can clap for that. But here's the other thing we have to think about. Arizona has one of the leading public cord blood banking programs in the country because that is a program that has been supported now for a number of years by our dollars through the Arizona Biomedical Bioscience Research Commission. The two bags that came from Girl Baby 1 and Girl Baby 2, and that's all we know about donors when it comes from a public cord blood bank, could have come from somebody here in Arizona. And those of you that follow me on Facebook, yes, I have a brand new grandbaby who was born at yesterday at about this time. So those of you that saw Jensen dance on the stage last September, she now has a baby sister, and she's really not sure what to do with it. So if you go to the AZ Bio Facebook page, you will see that picture. But we also, Blake Marie's cord blood and cord tissue are, probably got delivered this morning to cord blood registry in Tucson, Arizona, which is the largest private cord blood and cord tissue bank in the whole world world. That is an Arizona innovation and that is something we should be very proud of. And CBR people, raise your hands. I know there's several of you here. Raise your hands. Come on. That's when innovation matters. When it touches the life of a patient and a family and a person, that's when it matters. Now, Going back to those little cards on the table, what I'm going to ask you to do when I stop talking is I'm going to ask you to go to your phone and type in bit.ly. You don't have to write this down. It's on the little cards on your table. Slash, capital A, capital Z, dash, 1B. And the reason I'm asking you to do that is because Governor Ducey has a plan to help us build our university research infrastructure to the tune of one billion dollars. And he needs our help to get it through. And every person in this room can help us to do that by going to that link, putting in your information, and then there's a little, it'll come up, there's a little letter, you can customize the letter, you can put whatever you feel is appropriate in that letter, and you push the button and your legislators in Arizona will get that email when you push that button so that we can support the governor's plan. And when you do that, you're doing that as a private citizen, so you're not on behalf of your employer, they don't know who your employer is unless you even say it, but there are 260 people registered for this conference, and I'm really hoping that there will be 260 emails that go out today to those legislators and they pay attention to the fact that the people of Arizona want to see life-changing and life-saving innovation being done in our universities, and we need more room to grow. So you can do that. It doesn't cost you any money. It's really simple. You can customize it in your own words. But I would really, really, really like to see those emails go out before the end of the day. Because look at just some of the things that are happening here in Arizona. At ASU, we are seeing new innovations in cancer, in vaccines, in viruses in pathology, in all different areas of biomedical engineering and in diagnostics. But there's no more room at the end. At the Bio5 Institute, at the University of Arizona, they are continuing to work. We heard a little bit earlier about the amazing Sanofi drug that is working on asthma. Did you know that one of the leading asthma researchers in the entire world is at Bio5? So if we want to bring in that talent, if we want to have more amazing researchers like Dr. Jennifer Barton and others that are working on so many different things, 
It will not happen if we don't have some place to put them. We need to build our university tax infrastructure. The way they are proposing to do it is to use the sales tax that the universities pay to build all this stuff to pay for the bond to pay for the money. Some people like that idea, some people don't like that idea. And quite frankly, I'm so glad we have elected leaders. It's their problem or their challenge to figure that out, how they come up with it. But the message I want to get to our elected leaders today is the governor has a plan to get a billion dollars in university research infrastructure, and we need that now. And every person in this room can help. And Angela, I see you're taking notes over there. You are welcome to put that bit.ly link in the paper. All right. And of course, as we talk about our universities, um, when I was a little girl, I was afraid of things that went bump in the night. But I'm not afraid anymore because I know that people like Paul Kime and the team at TGen North and others, they are actually working on the superbugs and the diseases that go bump in the night. And we're counting on them to find answers to that and critical things like the new Lyme disease test and other things that we will be talking about later today. Lastly, our students. Students, raise your hand. I said this last night, I'm going to say it again. Now, students, keep those hands up. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please look at these people. Please be really nice to them because odds are, before you end your career, you'll be working for one of them. <laughs> so be nice to our students, talk to them, visit them at their posters after lunch. They're doing amazing work. And again, please share the message. Our elected leaders need to know that our industry and our community wants and needs that investment in the university research infrastructure and that we support the governor's plan. It's simple. It has taken a number of years to get this groundswell of support from the executive office to get this plan in place. Don't let it go the way healthcare did, where because enough people didn't step up to get the solution through that we had to say, oh, well, we'll have to fight this another day. We don't have another day for our university infrastructure. It has to happen now, and you can help make it happen. So please do that. And lastly, um, you will see on the AZ Bio Facebook page and other places, you heard Dan talk earlier this morning, Arizona Bioscience Week is October 8th through October the 14th. AZ Bio Awards will be October the 11th. And this is our opportunity to again do something amazing. And everybody here is invited to work with us to come up with cool things all across the state that will support Arizona Bioscience Week, whether it is workshops, guest speakers, or other things. We've got 4,000 visitors coming in towards the end of the week. Let's really show our state to its best advantage. And with that, we are going to take a short break and then next up will be Dr. Barker. Thank you very much.